verses 1, John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. There was a man of, of Pharisees named Nicodemus who was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from the Lord. For no man can do the signs you are undoing unless he comes from the Lord. There was a man named Nicodemus who was a Pharisee and a ruler of the Jews. Pharisees were people who had a strong uh, opposition contrary to the views of Christ Jesus. But we see this single man called Nicodemus who was also a ruler through what Jesus had taught. The word of God had come to his so he had earned it and he had believed. But because of the many opposition which were there and because of his level in the government, he didn't come to Jesus during the day. But regardless of his status, he chose to come to him. So one saw is important in the kingdom of God. Even if it is a single person who come to the knowledge of Christ, that person is important. And the grace of God, the knowledge of God, is able to pull down any stronghold of religion that prevents people from believing and receiving Christ. When the message of the kingdom of God is preached, it has power to break all the stronghold as we find in this case. So though the Pharisees were contrary to the will of God, there were some who still feared the Lord, who still walked in the ways of the Lord, as we see this case of Nicodemus. So in every generation, there is a remnant which God set apart who do not divert from the ways of the Lord. So John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us about this man who was called Nicodemus. He was a Pharisee and he was a ruler of the Jews. Yet he considered it wise to come to Christ. So this man, he was a man of nobility. He was a man who was highly learned. He was a man who and high authority in the government of the Jews, yet we see him relating to God. So the kingdom of God is inclusive. It does not exclude anyone. Everyone who comes to the kingdom of God, that person is accepted. Regardless of their social status, they will be accepted in the kingdom of God. We see this person, Nicodemus wanted to have personal relationship with God, personal intimacy with God. He did consider himself so high. He didn't consider himself having a very high rank that he could not associate with the maker. I believe personal relationship with our creator, it is key when we choose time to fellowship with God through prayer, through meditating on the word of God and through waiting upon him upon the feet of Jesus then Jesus will take away the error which have accumulated to us for a long time. Then as we are going to see in this discourse of Jesus and Nicodemus when he chose to be at the feet of Jesus, to be taught by him because Jesus is the greatest teacher ever we see his era was taken away. So every minister of the word of God, every leader, every person, should desire to have private time with the Lord. And when you choose to have private time with the Lord, where there is no noise, there is no past, nobody else, it is you and your maker. 
discussing, discussing with him. Tell him all what you think. Tell him all the perspective you have about life. Then he's going to mentor you. He's going to father you, as we are going to see here. And you are going to realize the many errors of religion which you have carried over the years. This is only possible when you decide to have private time with him. As we see here, this ruler choosing to have private with the maker. That is very important, especially to your soul. It is key because your soul will be ministered to when you come to your maker and you spend time with him. Then we are going to see why did he come to Jesus by night. Here, we are going to propose three possible reasons why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Number one, as to why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, it was an act of wisdom. Nicodemus was wise because he had observed Jesus during the day and he had realized that he had a lot of things to attend to the ministry, to the public. So he, he, he realized that at night it is when you would have enough time for him. Additionally, it was wise for Nicodemus to come to Jesus because at night, since Jesus had so many enemies, he had so many enemies, particularly who belong to the Pharisees and the Jews. So he realized that uh, if he interacted with him directly during the day, he could be not only putting his life in danger, but also the danger of his maker, Jesus Christ. So the greater good should always be preferred to the less. Personal interest should never take the interest of our maker, the interest of the relationship that we have with our maker. So it was wise for him to come to Jesus at night due to the many, many, many work involvement which were public, which Jesus was involved in. And he realized that uh, during the day, he would not have enough time for him. So he, he chose to see him privately. It was also an act of commitment. Number two asked why Nicodemus decided to visit Jesus or to see Jesus at night was an act of commitment. Nicodemus was a ruler in the Pharisees, in the Jews. Himself was very committed, so he could not find enough time during the day to converse with the maker. But at, at night, he decided to spare time. While others were sleeping, Nicodemus was conversing with the maker. And also, it was just a night earlier when Jesus had performed the first miracle ever in his ministry. So Nicodemus had just been convicted. And now he was committed to making the things which were not clear to him be made clear to him by Jesus. And he had realized that Jesus was not just like any teacher, like the, the teachers of the Pharisees. He was a special teacher. So he was a committed man in his business. And also he chose to visit the maker as an act of being zealous, being passionate about him. Desiring to know more, he was craving for knowledge, for deeper knowledge, for deeper relationship with this maker. And he chose it, just like David was meditating on God day and night. So where others were sleeping, Nicodemus chose to go and have conversion with the maker as we find here. So it was an act of commitment, an act of being zealous and to know more from the maker. Number three, why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night was because he was coward. So it was a sign of cowardice. So Nicodemus feared what other Pharisees and the Jews would say. So it was a sign of cowardice. He, he feared. He feared for his life. He feared for his career. But yet, there was a strong conviction in his heart that he could not ignore it. Though he came to Jesus by night, he was accepted. So regardless of our fears, regardless of our weaknesses, 
when we choose to come to Jesus, he will always welcome us home. And when he came to him, actually he was welcomed. And, and Christ did not see his weakness. Christ did not see his fear. He welcomed him home. And he taught him. He was able to take away all the errors which he had. He feared the religion. So religion is a dangerous thing. Actually, one of the things which religion do, it gives you activity to do, and it prevents you from your personal relationship with the maker. It always gives you something to do, and it keeps you waiting. But what the kingdom of God do to the life of a person, it makes you. It makes you to become that which God originally intended you to be. As we see in Nicodemus, was meant. At this time, though now he was very coward, in the future, we see, like in John chapter 7, verses 49 and 50, Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night, telling other Pharisees, does our law condemn a person without first hearing, without having the witness? So here it was this Nicodemus who was very coward initially. He didn't speak about Jesus openly, but when he had a personal relationship, he was able now to face this, these other religious leaders openly, without no fear. So once you choose to have intimacy with your maker, he gives you courage even to correct the very error in the religious men and in the religious uh, circles, which you have been propagating for a long time without fear, without fearing the consequences which will come, as we see in Nicodemus here dream. So the kingdom of God is like a small master descent. It grows, provided it start. Once now Nicodemus started personal relationship with Jesus, in the future we see him now being very courageous. The, the, the Holy Spirit was in him at this time now, and he could disagree with this other religious leader. He, he showed them the way they were propagating error in the name of God because they thought they were de defending God. But the very thing they thought they were defending, it is the very thing they were fighting. That is what religion do to the life of people. So anyone who comes to God, though you are fearful, though, though you are coward, though you are weak, once you come to Christ, he makes you strong. Men, are you there and you are weak in the things of God? Those, you are now the best candidate for God. When you come to him in humility, whether you come to him at night or during the day, he will not throw you away. He is going to give you strength. He is going to encourage you. And you will be able to, 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 to face the very things you have been fearing, the very people you have been fearing. You will be able to face them and on. And when you face them, you start now living. Because God gives you that courage. So Nebuchadnezzar, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he was coward. Number two, as a sign of commitment. And number three, as wisdom. As wisdom. So that is why he came to Jesus by night. And we have found that he was a man of noble character. He was a man of Nobility, he was a Pharisee. And we are learning that from John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, there was a man who was a Pharisee and, of, and, and, and a Jewish leader named Nicodemus, and he came to Jesus by night. So we are learning that the kingdom of God, it is for all people. Whether you are learned or not, whether you are powerful in the society or not, regardless of your religion, you, when you hear the word of God and they accept it, it is for you. So the word of God does not discriminate anyone. The kingdom of God is for all people. Provided you hear the word of God and they believe it, then you will be accepted. Even those who are feeling weak, the kingdom of God is for you. When you come to him, he will never cast you out. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. My prayer for you, especially those who have been religious, it is that you shall find the time to have personal relationship with your maker. As Nebuchadnezzar chose, when others were sleeping, when others were just indulging in their religious activities, this man, Nicodemus, he chose to have time with his maker. 
and all the errors of religion which he had concerning entering the kingdom of God, they were corrected. So whenever we come to Jesus in humility, in prayer, through his word, he teaches us because he's a great teacher. So God bless you and keep you even as you choose to have intimacy with him. As a person, he requires you to have personal relationship with him. He requires deep relationship, not activity, relationship with him. Once you choose to relate with him, you will know why you are created. You will know your purpose. You will know who he is. And then you will be able also to be a great light in your generation, in your family, in your life, in your institution. You are, you are going to glorify your maker. Once you make that bold step of faith of having him as your personal savior. So the takeaway in this reading is that the kingdom of God is for everyone. Personal relationship with your maker is key to your fulfillment, to your soul. Relationship with God makes your soul to be nourished, to be mentored, and to be ministered into when you choose to have it. God desires intimacy with his people. And the kingdom of God it grows. It starts as something small which can be despised by people. But with the time, it grows from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from favor to favor. So uh, the kingdom of God is a growing kingdom, as we see here in the, in the case of the, the Codemus, who began as coward, but later on, he was able even to face his fellow Pharisees and correct their error, that though they thought they were defending the law, they were breaking the same law because they were charging Jesus without any witness, without any evidence. Also, once you have the personal relationship with your maker, it corrects the error which has been propagated to you for many years, from the time you were born, through the leaders who have been teaching you religion, rather than the kingdom of God. That error is corrected immediately, and you start seeing God in the new dimension. You are reviewed. The spiritual blindness is taken away, and you are able to understand the things of God. Now you start rejoicing, and you start living, and you are so start seeing God as he is. God bless you and keep you. It is my prayer for you that like the Codemus, we are going to have private relationship with God, whereby we will realize that God is everywhere, God sees everything, and we will choose to obey God rather than men. We will not fear what men say, we will not fear what men can do to us, but our greatest desire will be to please our maker. And when we do that, our life will have impact, our life will have glory in each and every aspect of our life. God bless you and keep you. Keep on being tuned on to this channel which brings to you the truth found in the word of God. Meant to point you to Christ because Christ is the way. He is the truth and he is life. In him you are complete. In Jesus' name, God be with you all the days of your life. Amen and amen.